okay now we have a problem in two dimensions so we have two charges a and b plus q and plus q similar charges same magnitude separate by distance a and then you have a midpoint you have midpoint c and we are going on a perpendicular bisector at a distance a and we need to keep I calculate what the electric field at that point p is Okay, so we're going to do the same thing as we did in one dimension. The first step will always be to calculate the electric field due to individual charges separately alone and then you do a superposition theorem. The only difference now is in the previous case, in the one dimensional case, adding them was very easy. Either you add them or subtract. But now we're in two dimensions so we really need to use vector analysis. Positives and negatives won't work anymore. It will only work when you have only two directions. But now we need to really do some vectors. So it's going to be a practice on solving vector problems as well. Okay, so <clears throat> let's consider at point P electric field due to just charge A. What direction would that be? Electric field is always along the direction of, of the line joining the point and the charge. So I'm going to draw an imaginary line from here to here. And I know now electric field has to be in this direction or this direction. Now it's a positive charge, so electric field is going to be away, so it's going to be in this direction. We call it as EA. Similarly, due to charge B, I have to draw again a straight line because electric field is always along the line joining the point and the charge. Again, the electric field is either going to be this way or this way. It's a positive charge, so the electric field now is going to be in this direction. Okay, so uh, let me rub that, put that over here, and this will be over here, EB. Let's figure out the magnitude first and then we'll worry about calculating the vector sum. So EA is going to be, I'm going to use the same formula, K into Q divided by R square. R is a distance from A to B. Let's, let's call that as X for now. So it's going to be X squared. Similarly, electric field due to B is going to be it's going to be the same because the distance is going to be the same x and the charge is the same so we get the same answer kq by x squared so the magnitude is the same before we go any forward let's calculate what that x x squared is to do that let's look at the small triangle that we have we have a triangle acp this is a and ac is half of ab and ab is a so it's a by 2 so Pythagoras tells us x square should be equal to a square plus a square by 4. x square is 5 a square by 4. So I can substitute that over here now. kq divided by 5 a square by 4 because x square itself is 5 a square by 4. I don't have to take the square root again or square again. So here it is. And similarly this guy will also be also be same number 4 kq by 5a square. And now we need to add them vectorially. Let me redraw that because it's going to get crowded over there. So here's at point P and here is vector EA and here is vector EB. Either I have to know what this angle is and then I can use a direct uh, vector addition formula, parallelogram law, or I think a better way to solve this would be by decomposing them into two perpendicular directions. Now when you think of this conceptually, think about it, you have two electric fields in these directions and they are equal in magnitude. If they are equal in magnitude, even without solving, we can make a guess. If they are equal in magnitude, then the net field should be right in between them. Imagine two friends are pulling you in these directions and they're putting the same force on you. The, the magnitude is the same. It's only direction is this way. So obviously the net force on you would be right in between. And so we can pretty much guess the net field has to be upwards from the symmetry because these two have the same, uh, they have the same, they have the same length. So from the symmetry they have to uh, put the net field upwards. Okay, but we're going to resolve them. So let's choose these two axes 
because we already know net field is this way. And let's call this angle as theta. That angle is the same as this angle. Okay, and notice that theta is the same as this angle theta. So we don't have any worries calculating cos or sine. Okay, if we decompose them, we get a component here, Ea cos theta. And we get a component here, Ea sine theta. Similarly, this angle should also be theta. Everything is symmetric because this angle is also theta. And therefore, when you take a component here, you get Eb cos theta. And you get an Eb sin theta. So I just add over here. Notice we already saw E and Eb are equal to each other in magnitude. And therefore, these two guys cancel out. Let me just cut them properly. So the net field, write that over here, at point P has to be upwards, it's going to be Ea sine theta plus Eb sine theta. But E and Eb are equal to each other, so it's going to call this 2 Ea sine theta. And Ea or Eb, one of them, is given to us. That's going to be 4 kq divided by 5a squared. And sine theta, let's come back to over here, look at this triangle. Sine theta is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So, it's the opposite side A divided by the hypotenuse is X. But we know what X is. That's the square root of 5 divided by 2 times A. You get that? You take the root. And so we now have our solution. The net field EP is going to be, hmm, let's see, you get 16 KQ divided by, you get 5 root 5 A squared, and I'm just going to call that as upwards. And there you have it. We solved a seemingly complicated problem in two dimension. <laughs> not so, not so difficult. I wouldn't say not very easy, uh, but not so difficult as well. Okay, so there you have it. See you next time.